Hello and welcome back to First Chapter Fridays. I have another book I want to share with you today. Jada Sly, Artist and Spy. I discovered this book during Black History Month. It was one of the books I introduced to my students and I had not read it yet, but a bunch of my kids were like, Mr. Wolf, I want to read that book one day. So I thought I'd do a First Chapter Friday and see what we thought. So let's get started. This book is by Sherry Winston, Jada Sly. Artist and spy. Got a couple pictures in there too. Our Air France direct flight from Bordeaux to New York City trembled and shook. Exhaust thundered from the engines. Plumes of fire ate away the signs of the plane. Would I be able to save everyone or were we doomed? Heart hammering, I gripped this, my sketchbook, drawing fast to capture the faces of enemy agents determined to take over our plane. Smoke from the fiery aircraft burned my eyes and nose. The enemy swarmed the plane. Something had to be done. My spy training kicked in. This was what I prepared, prepared for. Slow, steady breaths. In, out. In, out. Just like my ballet teacher, Madame Genevieve, had taught me. Then I switched from ballet techniques to martial arts. My muscles strained, knee bent, foot tucked under my butt. I was ready to strike. The enemies began to surround me, muscles tight as drums, teeth gritted. And then, Mademoiselle, are you feeling unwell? A French accent rose above the chaos. It was the flight attendant hovering at the end of our aisle. She looked down at Cecile, my father's museum colleague. Madam, is the young lady going to be all right? The burning trails of engine smoke evaporated. The charred airplane returned to normal. No enemies dashed down the aisle or lunged for my journal on top of secret sketches. Mementos and the faces of would-be assassins. And none of the passengers cried for help or even looked distressed. Cecile reached over and squeezed my hand. She assured the flight attendant that I was tres bien. After a long moment, the flight attendant left us. I chewed on my lip, lowered my foot, and drew a deep breath. You're going to be just fine, my chérie, Cecile said. This is only your third flight since... Her voice faltered. She was going to say, since the accident. I'm fine, I said resolutely. Papa used to say I was the most resolute young lady he'd ever known. Resolute means determined. Back then, he meant it as a compliment. Now, well, a lot had changed. My name is Sly, Jada Sly. I am an artist and I am a spy. One of my talents is remembering faces. I love to draw and observe the shapes and curves that make people's faces. Being a great observer and artist is going to help me become the, the best international spy one day. I was in the midst of the greatest mission I'd probably ever have, one that could change my life forever. Understand, I wasn't some super brilliant kid genius with a million gadgets who belonged to a secret agency that employed other super brilliant young geniuses, the kinds of kids you read about in made-up stories. I was simply me, a girl who had grown up playing spy games, solving puzzles and digging up buried secrets not to mention my knack for memorizing the angles of a person's face and form. As I said, I was also an artist. Honestly, it was in my blood. The airplane glided above puffy white clouds and I continued to keep a watchful eye. I needed my nerves calm and my focus steady. On the seat between Cecile and me sat my pet bunny, Josephine Baker. She had been sleeping in her cage, fat and cuddly larger than most bunny rabbits, with ivory and caramel colored fur and large droopy ears. She was a highly skilled operative, capable of decoding complex calculations, but she was also just so furry that stroking her calmed my nerves. Mostly the second part, actually. I loved dreaming up spy scenarios and practicing missions with a few of my friends back home in Bordeaux. Sometimes I got really caught up in my imagination. Lately, though, it seemed the scenarios I dreamed up were feeling more and more real. Too real. Papa said I was having something called a panic attack. He said it was normal, given 
what all our family had been through, but I didn't want the panic attacks to be my new normal. My reflection in the plane's window made me smile. I couldn't help touching my hair again. I used to wear ponytails. Now it was cut in a daring and bold style, with bangs that swept across my cheek and covered one eye. Papa had laughed when I returned from the salon looking brand new. Then he'd hugged me so tight I thought my lungs would explode. He was already in New York. He'd left a few weeks earlier in preparation for the reopening of our family's museum, the Sly. He was going to be the new director. Cecile was born in Bordeaux. She worked with my dad in France. When he decided to move back to New York, she agreed to come. I had stayed behind because of a summer trip with my classmates. Now I was arriving after the American schools had begun. I hadn't been to school in the United States since pre-kindergarten. It was going to be a strange feeling like a foreigner in my own country. Cherie, she said, her French accent a joyous mixture of syllables. What are you thinking about with such intensity? I can practically feel your imagination, your imaginative brain working. I reached out across to playfully nudge her. As much as I love Cecile and Papa, I had to remind myself that they were keeping secrets from me too. Grown-ups always think they should be the ones with secrets. They believe in honesty only when it benefits them. I tell you, if young people weren't natural born spies, we'd never find out anything. Allow me to give an example. I was 100% positive Mama had not worked as a foreign service officer at the U.S. Embassy while we'd been living in Bordeaux. That was what she told everyone. I knew better. She had to be a real-life, honest-to-goodness spy. Of course, no one, especially Papa, would confirm it. Six months earlier, Mama was flying a plane. It crashed somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. The very ocean we are now flying over, no bodies were ever found. Doesn't that sound suspicious? It did to me. Like the kind of thing that could happen only if my mother were a spy. I wonder if learning to fly a plane was something Mama did to become a spy. Hmm, I'll have to put it on my list of things to learn just in case. Mama was the only one who played all sorts of spy games with me. She knew I liked hiding in her big double closet, looking for classified information, like birthday presents meant for me. One year for Christmas, all my gifts were hidden. I had to use a tracking coordinates to find them. We used to watch old spy movies. She thought my love of espionage was wonderful. Papa preferred quizzing me on art and art history. He was always asking me to look at my surroundings and tell him what famous painter came to mind. He had changed since the accident. When I told him about my belief that Mama had not died in the crash, he wanted me to see a psychologist. But what I needed, desperately, was answers. I was running out of time. My parents had been the perfect couple. Sure, they didn't do a lot of things together. In fact, In the year before the accident, Papa and I were spending more and more time together while Mama was spending more and more time away. I'd been angry at her about that. Not now, because surely she had been gone because of secret missions. Thanks to the skills she taught me, I had discovered another important secret. It was about Papa and Cecile. In the past few months, I'd begun to notice how he looked at her and blushed when she looked at him. How he'd started wearing clean cardigans to work rather than the messy ones with rips and stains. I needed answers because way deep in my soul, I knew Mama wasn't dead. She was merely in hiding to protect Papa and me. She had been in danger, and maybe we were too. I just knew it. I had this feeling, more than a feeling. I had proof. The only other flights I'd taken since she disappeared had been to New York City for her memorial and back to Bordeaux. Mama whose mother was African-American and father was Egyptian, grew up in the city. Mama loved some art. Not the way Papa got all gooey-eyed about a painting, but she knew what she liked. Edgar Degas' drawing and painting of ballet dancers were her favorites. It had a tiny replica of Edgar Degas' famous little dancer sculpture. At the gravesite the day of Mama's memorial, I left the figure behind. A few days after Papa and I returned to Bordeaux, I woke in the middle of the night I had a strange feeling, like someone had been in my room. The faint smell of Mama's favorite fragrance, Coco Chanel, lingered around me, 
and there on the nightstand stood the figurine. Of course, Papa insisted the next day that I must have brought it back with me. He thought it made more sense to believe that I'd somehow forgot and left a statuette on my own nightstand, even though it was supposed to be thousands of miles away in a cemetery. I wanted to argue with him about it. I needed someone to believe me. My mother was alive, and I was going to find her. <coughs> and that is the first chapter, Jada Sly, Arson Spy. Check it out to see what happens.